Let's talk about articulations for just a few minutes. And the first thing that I want to talk about is the amount of movement in an articulation. With a synarthrosis, there's very little movement. Ampiarthrosis, a small amount of movement. Diarthrosis is freely movable. Some people say that synarthrosis, synarthroses joints have no movement whatsoever. Let's take a look at these and break these down a little bit more. The amphiarthrosis and the synarthrosis can be cat cat categorized as fibrous or cartilaginous. And then some sub subcategories of the fibrous joints include sutures of the skull, which are synarthroses, gomphosis, which is a tooth socket, or a syndesmosis, which is the interosseous membrane between the radial ulnar or tibiofibular articulations. If we look at a cartilaginous type joint, this can be a synchondrosis or synchondroses, which are the epiphyseal plates. Hyaline cartilage is what helps to generate new bone in these synchondroses. A symphysis or a symphysis are also fibrocartilage. They are cartilaginous in nature. We're talking about the pubic symphysis, the intervertebral discs and these oftentimes have a plug or a pad associated with them. And I think the key thing I want to add in here is that there is a fibrous element to this cartilage. It's fibrocartilage. It's going to look a little bit different under the microscope than just regular hyaline cartilage. If we think about a diarthrosis, we think about a freely movable joint, which is a synovial joint. Remember that synovial joints have a capsule. There's a synovial membrane which in which synoviocytes produce synovial fluid. Remember that synovial fluid provides for lubrication, but also for mm, a metabolic element. Synovial fluid helps supply glucose inside of the joint and helps to remove waste, functions in shock absorption. In a few minutes, we're gonna look in detail at a few of the joints. The classic joints that you might think of are the elbow, the knee, the shoulder and the hip joint. Those are synovial joints that we're going to showcase in just a few minutes. Ligaments connect bone to bone. Tendons connect muscle to bone. And bursa or a, or a bursa is a synovial sac associated with a, an articular capsule, a joint capsule, and 30 years ago, I used to hear about people being diagnosed with bursitis. I hear about this some, but this used to be a diagnosis that was quite common years ago if a person had pain near a joint. We say that arthritis is inflammation, pain, and reduced range of motion associated with a joint. Osteoarthritis is very prevalent in 65-year-old people and above. But if a person is carrying a lot of weight on their bony structure, a person can have osteoarthritis a lot sooner than 65 years of age. Remember that some types of arthritis have a chemical nature to them. Rheumatoid arthritis is an autoimmune disease which has a blood marker associated with it and this actually destroys cartilage and deforms joints. Quite painful to the people that suffer from that. If we think about the different actions that we have at joints, flexion is when we decrease the angle of the joint, extension increase the angle of the joint. And in the past, when I think about the word hyperextension, I think about something painful. If somebody says that he hyperextended his blank, his <laughs> leg, his knee, so I'm automatically thinking this is a bad situation. But the truth is, <clears throat> when, you, when your leg is in the back position here in, in walking, it's in the hyperextended position. Hyperextension just means a position that is out of the normal anatomical position. So if a person is in a stride forward, this back leg would be in hyperextension, even though it's not in a situation that is causing pain. Abduction is moving away from the midline, adduction is moving toward the midline. I always remember this because to me, when I bring my arms back to the middle, it's like I'm adding something to the midline. So I can remember adduction is moving something back to the middle. 
Circumduction is moving in a cone-shaped motion. So if I look at my shoulder and I think about this as the apex of the cone and my fingers circumscribing the base of a cone, that's pretty easy to see for circumduction. <coughs> Rotation is movement around an axial position, in this case, the longitudinal axis of my body. Interestingly enough, opposition is the movement of your thumb to your fingers. And then reposition is just movement back to anatomical position. Protraction is moving a body part forward. And probably the easiest one to think about is if, if I hug someone, my scapula, scapulae move forward. And then when I bring my shoulders back, I retract my scapula. It would probably help me have better posture if I would do that. Dorsiflexion, plantar flexion, inversion, eversion, those are best shown with the foot. So let me get in a position where I can show that. If I move my foot, if I move my foot upward, that is dorsiflexion. This is plantar flexion. This is inversion. And this is eversion. Facing the bottom of the foot outward is eversion. When I think about pronation and supination, this is supination, this is pronation, this is supination, this is pronation. If I'm laying face up, what am I, what am I then? Supine. And if I'm laying face down, <coughs> it's pronation. Okay, very good. If I'm lay, lying in the prone position, I am lying face down. Let's talk about different kinds of joint joints. Plane joints are non-axial, and this basically just move, means that they move from side to side. They're gliding joints. These are found in the wrist bones and in the intertarsal bones of the ankle, so in your ankle area. Hinge joints include the elbow and the knee, the interphalangeal joints right here. These are uniaxial, and these consist of a convex fitting into a concave. I always remember that concave is the any because that's what a cave does it goes inward and convex is the out the bulging out portion when i think about the elbow joint in particular i'm thinking about the trochlear notch that articulates with the trochlea on the humerus and that is the hinge articulation while I'm talking about the elbow, let's talk about one other thing, though. When I think about the elbow joint, there is a humeral ulnar and a humeral radial articulation, but, but pay close attention. There's also, there is also a radial ulnar articulation. There's a ligament that goes around the radius that allows for this action, that allows for pronation and supination. So not only do we get a hinge action at this joint, but we also get some other doorknob turning activities, which are kind of nice. Pivot joints, uh, the one that we are featuring right now is the atlantoaxial articulation. Remember the C2 vertebra has an odontoid process that allows the atlas to move and pivot around that one. It's in the upper neck. This is a uniaxial articulation joint. Condylar or ellipsoid joints are biaxial and we're talking about the metacarpophalangeal joints. Everybody say metacarpo? Metacarpophalangeal. Okay, so we're actually talking about metacarpophalangeals. We're talking about these joints right here. Right here at the where this bone joins into the phalanx, the proximal phalanx. <coughs> Now, a saddle joint is a little bit confusing, but this is the carpo, excuse me, the carpo metacarpal junction of the thumb. It would be the, the long bone here articulating with the trapezium. And so it, it allows for movement in this plane. And then it also can go this way. So it is a saddle type biaxial, allows for movement in two different directions. A ball and socket is multi-axial. We're talking about the shoulder joint and we're talking about the hip joint. 
Remember that the shoulder joint is heavily reinforced by muscle. There is a tiny glenoid fossa that is built up with a glenoid labrum so that the head of the humerus has somewhere to go. Remember that the shoulder is mostly reinforced by muscle. So if you mess up your shoulder, if you mess up your shoulder, it's probably gonna take some rehab to get it fixed. It's not just the repositioning of the bones, it's the strengthening of the muscles. It might even require surgery if there's cartilaginous or muscle damage, possibly. The knee is the largest diarthrosis in the body. Remember we said that diarthrosis means freely movable. Well, it doesn't mean, let me rephrase that. It probably doesn't mean freely movable, but it, it is a freely movable joint. That's probably what I should say. What does di mean, by the way? Two. Two. What does arthro mean? It, joint. Arthro means joint. So if we say arthritis, we just literally mean inflammation of a joint. It's just that simple. Say it again. Thank you. Itis is just inflammation. Oh, very good. When we look at the knee, there is a medial and there's a lateral meniscus. There is a C-shaped fibrocartilaginous pad that kind of gives the, the ends of the femur, the humps, the condyles, a place to track. There is a tibial collateral ligament that goes down the medial aspect, and then there's a fibular collateral ligament that goes down the lateral aspect, connecting the femur to the fibula. One of the things that I'm kind of noticing, and I think I might be right, but check this out and see what you find out, is that the medial collateral ligament down on the medial side, it kind of connects onto the medial meniscus. I think I'm right in that a lot of people, some people that have a medial collateral damage, the, the ligament tear will actually tear off a piece of the meniscus as it destroys. So look into that, I think that's kind of interesting. The anterior and the posterior cruciate ligaments are on the inside of the knee, and when the knee joint is extended, the anterior cruciate pro prohibits hyperextension and excessive anterior translation of the tibia on the femur. The posterior cruciate in knee flexion prohibits posterior translation of the tibia on the femur. I think I've already talked about the shoulder joint. The only thing I would like to add, there are two things I would like to add into this discussion on the shoulder, is that the specific shoulder muscles that make up the rotator cuff include the supraspinatus, infraspinatus, the teres minor, and the subscapularis. Also, another consideration too. When looking at a shoulder or problems with the shoulder, there is and a chromioclavicular joint. Look up. There is a sternoclavicular joint. There is a scapulothoracic articulation. So all of these articulations influence the function of the shoulder. We talk about specifically about the shoulder joint. We're talking about the glenohumeral articulation, but the shoulder is more complex than that. And any problems with the other joints can also influence how the shoulder functions. I think I've talked about the elbow joint pretty nicely. Let's talk about the hip joint and we'll be about finished today. The hip joint is called the coxal joint. I call the hip joint the coxifemoral joint and some people just call it the coxal joint. It is a heavy weight bearing joint and so it's one of the joints that is likely to need replacement. As a person gets older, the hip joints and the knee joints oftentimes are replaced. I think what's kind of interesting is some of the early hip joint replacements that I saw allowed for a receptacle to replace the acetabulum, but they went way down onto the femur and they were cutting the whole top end of the femur off and placing a massive prosthetic down into this femur to connect the femur to the this cavity created by this receptacle, this metallic receptacle. But some of the pictures that I'm seeing right now show that they're only taking the femur head and the neck off and they're able to put the prosthetic so that the greater and the lesser trochanter are preserved. Why would it be important for the greater or the and the lesser and or the lesser trochanter to be preserved 
in a hip, in a uh, in a hip replacement. Why would that be important? There are lots of muscles that attach to the greater trochanter and the lesser trochanter, and so if we leave those intact, then it would help the person's musculature to be more suitable to accept this change that has happened in their body. Very good. So come back over here with me for just a minute. I, I've got to do something before I leave because I, I won't feel right if I don't do this. So I need to do a little bing, 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 click, click. That's what I got to do this before I get out of here today. Okay, so uh, if you can see these, say these with me. And uh, here we go. Uh, diarthrosis. Elbow or knee. Elbow or knee. Synovial. Synovial. Bing, 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 click, click. Okay, I got to do this. This is part of what I got to do. Uh, say center arthrosis. Center arthrosis. Fibrous. 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 Suture. Suture. Bing, 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 click, click. And let's say this together. Amphiarthrosis. Amphiarthrosis. Cartilaginous. 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 Synthesis. Synthesis. Bing, 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 click, click. Okay, they were done. Thank you.